Manga Wido. My name is Akami Kurihara, 35 years old. Right now, I work at a certain manufacturer's factory as a dispatched worker. I spend my day sweating it out with about 30 other dispatch workers at this factory, which is close to the company's head office. Kurihara-san! What's wrong, Megumi? The lane over there stopped running. Okay, leave it to me. In the meantime, go in and help out on B lane. Thank you so much. She's Megumi, who joined us last year. She's energetic and hardworking. She's one of my closest juniors. This is my third year here. There were a lot of turnovers, so I became the leader since it was my third year. My main work at the factory is inspecting and bagging. We need to get the deliveries in time for the noon and evening shipments. Okay, that's the lunchtime delivery. Good work, everyone. Good, Good work. work! Shall we have lunch then? Yes! Us dispatched workers didn't have much interaction with each other up to this point. But thanks in part to Megumi's cheerful personality, we were getting to know each other quite well these days. Cooperation is important, especially for simple tasks. Your daughter is so cute! Was she three years old? That's right. My husband takes care of her for now. Does your husband stay at home? Yeah, he works from home these days. I see. And so, we all took a lunch break. And while we were all having a lively lunch break, that man came in. Damn! Dispatch workers are so cheerful, aren't they? Good work, Kitajima-san. Yeah, good work. Wait. You're a dispatch worker. You shouldn't be tired, right? No, not really. We're all working pretty hard. That's because you're an old lady. Being a full-time employee is many times harder than being a dispatch worker. This man is Kitajima, a 29-year-old full-time employee who works at the main office and was hired mid-career three years ago. He has been in charge of this factory since last month, and he blatantly disrespects the dispatched workers. Are the noon shipments on time? Yes, everyone worked very hard. Huh, <laughs> acting like you're a good leader. Are you sure everyone's not annoyed by the strange, obnoxious lady? Not at all. Kuri Harasan has helped us all. Yeah, yeah. Good thing you're getting along. Oops, phone call. Full-time employees are busy after all. Well, good luck this afternoon. Chee, yes. We managed to get the noon shipment out in time. What's with that guy? He really ticks me off. The previous employee was a nice guy. It's been the worst since Kitajima-san took over. He doesn't help us at all and just slacks off. Ah. Well, let's not worry about it. We can do well enough on our own. Although I say that, I was quite angry with that employee too. The factory employees are supposed to work with us in the first place. But Kitajima would always waste time somewhere and show up only at noon and in the evening. When he did show up, he was sarcastic to us, but buttered up to the section chief at the head office. I have to do something about it. One day, while I was thinking so, a decisive event occurred. We have more deliveries than usual today, so let's do our best. Yes! This day was way busier than usual. Despite that, we worked frantically to somehow make it in time for the noon shipment. At this rate, I think we'll make it in time. So let's just keep going until the end. Roger that! Oh, come on! Are we gonna make it on time with this pace? I'm the one that's getting scolded if we don't make it on time! Then help us out a little. Huh? With all due respect, the employee in charge of the factory should be the one to take the initiative, right? Listen, lady. Do you think it's okay for a dispatch worker to talk to a full-time employee like that? The person who used to be in charge of the factory gave me proper guidance while working with his hands himself. I don't care who was in charge before! You needed to shut up and work! H hey Come on, get on with it! I'm a full-time employee! Why would I help a dispatch worker like you? Well then... Oh, Chief! A dispatch worker made a mistake and we don't know if we can get this shipment out in time! Kurihara-san, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. This is getting out of hand? Yeah, I'll think of something. Even before Megumi told me, I was already at the end of my patience, and I'd already made a decision by then. 
Kitajima kept harassing us at every opportunity, even after that. That day, as we were working... Hurry, Harasan! Someone's injured! Okay, I'll be right there. As I rushed over to where Megumi was calling from, one of the dispatched workers had sprained their leg. She fell while holding something heavy. It's getting a little swollen. She needs to go to the hospital right away. Megumi, do you know where Kitajima-san is? No, I haven't been able to reach him. He's probably slacking off somewhere again. Employees were supposed to be inside the factory so they could respond to emergencies, but Kitajima was slacking off somewhere today as usual. I had no choice and told the person in charge of the dispatch agency as I gave first aid. Hey, hey, hey! What are you slacking off for? Can't you see she's injured? It's a sprain! Injury? It's just a sprain! Just a sprain? Come on, stop slacking off like that and get to work! You're the one who's slacking off. What did you say? Anyways, I'm taking her to the hospital. Huh? You're a dispatch worker. You think you could do that on your own? It's okay if I take her to the hospital, right? Nope! Going to the hospital for a mere sprain? Are you stupid? That's why you uneducated people! Can't you see it's swollen? Lady, do you understand your position? You're a dispatch worker and I'm a full-time employee. Don't you understand the hierarchy? <sighs> there are plenty of people who can take your place. I see. If you can't listen to what I say, you can quit! I understand. Well, thank you for everything. Wh what Kurihara san How graceful! That helps a lot. No, do you know what will happen if Kurihara san quits? You know, work is not a friendly game. Dispatch workers have replacement. Megumi, it's all right now. But, but. Old lady leader is no longer of any use to us. Then let me just take her to the hospital for the last time. Ha! Huh. Suit yourself. Kurihara san. You're all going to be fine, don't worry. But. And I took the injured to the hospital and went straight home. That was Friday. Although Saturday was a day off for the factory, I was worried about what was going to happen on Monday. And Monday, one call came in just before noon. Yes? Hey! What's going on? Yes? We haven't made it in time for the afternoon shipment at all! Kitajima was distraught on the phone. When he went to the factory before noon as usual, he found that they had not made it in time for the shipment at all. Why is this happening all of a sudden? Who knows? Maybe because you didn't give proper instructions to everyone? How can an employee give detailed instructions? It's not supposed to be like that, is it? Sh just get over here right now! Huh? You're the one who told me to quit. Th that's... Please, take responsibility for your words. Well, good luck. Uh, hey! But I was still worried about Megumi and everyone else. I called Megumi as I prepared to leave the house. Hello? Kurihara-san? We're in so much trouble. Right? So how are things looking? Kitajima-san only says, hurry up. He finally started panicking and joined the lane. But he can't do anything, so he's rather in the way. I see. But don't worry, I'm coming soon. What? Coming soon? And so I headed to a certain place. So you're officially back at work from today? Yeah, thanks. For everything you've done for me. No problem. We've all been waiting for you. And about that employee... With this, the top management has decided to let you handle it. I see. This is worse than I thought. Get your butt in gear, you dispatchers! It's your fault if we don't get it done in time! Uh... There are still many new dispatch workers in the factory, so it's only natural that this would happen if they can't be given precise instructions. Oh! You're here after all! Yeah. Well, why are you wearing a suit, lady? Hey! Who do you think you're talking to? Ch chief Calling her like that? Don't be rude to your seniors! Senior? Why? Kurihara-san is my senior, which means she's your senior, too! Huh? He joined the company while I was on maternity leave, right? Then it's not surprising that he doesn't know. Well, that's true, but... Wh wait a minute! Why would such a veteran become a dispatch worker? Are you stupid? 
Dispatchers are professionals in their field! That's right. I used to work at the head office. The current section chief was my junior at that time. I was working hard, but when I was 30, I got pregnant, and that's when I left the company. But they kept nagging me to come back. Uh, I apologize, but there was no one who could do the job as well as you. And then my daughter turned one, and my husband started working from home. After consulting with my husband, I registered with a dispatch agency run by our company. I worked as a dispatch worker at various factories and had a chance to come back to this site. Since Senpai was originally in charge of the factory, I was relieved to have her here. But I had no idea that Kitajima was the tumor. Why? I've reported all your problematic behavior to my superiors. Why? I was so happy when I heard that you were coming back. It's because you were so persistent. I had been producing results when I joined the factory and was being encouraged to return to the head office again. And when I continued to think about it, Kitajima came. I thought I couldn't trust him with this factory any longer, so I decided to return to the head office. Kitajima, just like you told me to quit, I quit being a dispatch worker. Kurihara-san became a head office employee as of today. In other words, starting today, she is your boss. No! But I resigned from the company once. Best regards from now on, Chief. Please stop! I've always respected you. Ha! <laughs> Um... Hmm? What's wrong? I... I'm so sorry! I didn't know anything! But from here on, I'll study under you, Kurihara-san! I see... Yes! Anything you need, I will be at your service! Then, you're fired. What? I have one last command for you. Leave this place. That's it. Wait, what are you talking... Of course, I have the president's permission. You'll get a month's salary, so don't worry. S sorry I apologize, so please don't fire me! Oh my, don't you know how to speak respectfully to your seniors? Don't you understand the hierarchy? Damn it! What's your problem? You know, just because you're a full-time employee doesn't mean you can look down on dispatched workers. We don't need employees who can't appreciate the people who work for our company. I've seen all the evidence of your problematic behavior. What more do you want to say? You're not getting away with this! I will be taking over the responsibility of managing this factory. Yes! I'm sorry. I was told from the top to kick him out after I'm officially reinstated. That's okay. We're just happy to have you back, Kurihara-san. Thanks, everyone. Anyway, from now on, we have to get the shipment out in time. Everyone back to your stations! Yes! Good work, senpai! All right, shall we begin? Yes. Let's see what our former factory manager can do! And a few days later, Kitajima was officially fired from his job. According to rumors, he was unable to find a new job after that and became unemployed. Around that time, we started receiving harassing phone calls to our company, but the culprits were soon arrested. It was Kitajima, of course. Apparently, he had been working as a dispatched worker for another company before coming here, and he was being harassed a lot. That's probably why he was lashing out on us so hard. I then put forward measures to improve the efficiency of the factory and successfully increased productivity. I'm now in the process of converting dispatched workers to full-time employees. Teamwork is vital on site. Rewarding them will surely bring even more benefits to the company. My name is Tetsuya Karata. Without having a wealthy background or any smarts, I decided to skip university and start working after high school graduation. The person who hired me was Mr. Misaki, my uncle. My uncle, who runs a factory for machine parts, is an old-fashioned and bold person who says, anyone can come work for me. They're happily welcome, allowing even people like ex-delinquents and convicts. I was scared of my senior colleagues at first, but they were all great people once you got to know them and I was quickly able to blend in. Everyone appreciated my uncle for hiring them and worked very hard in order to pay him and the company. I too worked hard every day with the same purpose. My uncle eventually told me, the next boss is gonna be you, Tetsuya. I was sure it was just a joke until after 20 years since I started working. All right, I'm leaving the rest to you. Me becoming the boss, wasn't that a joke? What do you mean? 
I'm always serious. You're the most put together out of all of us, and everyone acknowledges you. I'm counting on you. Apparently, he's serious. I was worried at first about whether I could fill those shoes, but with the help of everyone who supported me throughout these years, I've somehow been able to do this job. Sometimes we were forced an unrealistic deadline and got attacked with words like, you bottom tier subcontractor. But with the support of people like our top skilled employees who skillfully puts out any potential fires and the young employees with great negotiating skills who cleverly solve issues, we were able to somehow keep the business afloat. I've been feeling that since I'm not so reliable, the employees feel like, we need to protect our boss no matter what and are working very hard for me. If Uncle saw this through and chose me, he's a pretty impressive strategist. One day, as we were working hard like so, I received a call. Hey, Tetsuya! Are you doing well? Yes, yeah, somehow. Thanks to everyone. That's great! Um, uh, I'm sending a young one over tomorrow, so please put him to use. Oh, does that mean to hire him? Um, he's an acquaintance of mine. Don't worry. He might look a bit intimidating, but deep inside he's a nice guy. I swear on that. See you later. I'm counting on you. Everything my uncle does is sudden and impulsive, but he has a great eye, and he's never been wrong before. It'll be all right as long as my uncle says so. The next day, I brought the earnest-looking young man to our reception room. My name is Kazuma Suzuki. I've come thanks to Mr. Masaki's invite. Yes, I heard. Is it true that you want to work here? Yes, I'm not too smart, but I'll work very hard, so please hire me! For some reason, I saw my young self inside of him and felt a good impression. No wonder Uncle recommends him. Everyone, this is Mr. Suzuki. He'll be working with us starting tomorrow. My name is Kazuma Suzuki. I'm 20 years old. I'm still inexperienced, but I will try my best. Very good. Everyone, please teach him anything he needs to know. I'm counting on you. Yes, yes sir! sir! At first sight, Kazuma was a nice and calm boy. I couldn't understand the meaning of the line he might look intimidating that my uncle said. Kazuma does have a relatively gloomy and low-key quality to him, so maybe he was describing that as intimidating. Whenever I taught him something, Kazuma listened passionately while taking notes. As long as he takes the job seriously, I have no complaints. Kazuma could carry out anything he was taught once. I initially thought that making deals with partnering companies would be difficult for him, but he pulled even that off with ease. He wouldn't back down against even our scary looking guests and truly seem reliable. Uncle, Kazuma is doing really well. His responses and greetings are all loud and clear, so even the partnering companies like him. That's great. He's a kid who could do anything once you teach him. So do me a favor and train him well. All right, roger that but I can only trust him unconditionally for the first month after he joined the company. On that day, I accidentally saw it. Hey, it's starting to rain. Hurry up and carry the packages. Don't get them wet. When we were carrying a few packages outside, it suddenly started to pour. It rained like a squall and all the employees, including me, became soaking wet. In the chaos, when I gave a quick look at Kazuma, what? Through his shirt, I could see a giant tattoo of a dragon on his back. Tattoo? Why? Is it possible that Kazuma's a member of the Yakuza? He was avoiding talking about his past during the greeting party, but was that not because he was embarrassed, but because there was something he couldn't mention to us? Maybe it's that he still has connections with the Yakuza. But Uncle said he could be trusted, so relax. Eventually, I decided to ignore it for now. Uh, why won't you pick up, Uncle? I tried to call Uncle and ask him what was going on, but he wouldn't pick up. Apparently, his phone is out of service right now. I thought about it alone for a few days, but in the end, decided not to ask anything about the tattoo. Even if Kazuma had a past that he could not tell anyone else, he's currently more diligent and works harder than anyone else. There's probably some type of reason for that tattoo. I'll wait until Kazuma decides to tell me himself. Even if he ends up not telling me, as long as he keeps working hard, I'll just keep employing him. After making that decision, I decided to act normal with him again. However, Kazuma started getting paler by the day and gradually seemed to get worn out. Kazuma, what's wrong? Are you feeling sick? No, um, it's been very hot at night lately and I haven't been getting much sleep. 
Kazuma looks away. Even though he always gives a straight look with a smile, something's wrong. The thought was floating around in my mind, and on the next day, I came to find out the reason why. That day, while I was observing Kazuma, some other worker came over after lunch break and called him over. That worker's name was Hidaka. He was a senior to Kazuma and made deliveries for a company. The two went over to the other side of the factory. I got a bad feeling in my gut and decided to follow them. Hurry up and give me the money. You want me to keep quiet about that thing on your back, right? But, um, I just gave you some last week and... Huh? Do you think you get to talk back to me for just 10,000 yen? If you don't want to hand it over, I can tell everyone about it, right? Anything but that. I'll pay you the money if that's what you want. 20,000 yen it is. Come on, hurry up and give it to me. What are you doing? Huh? Boss? When I rushed over, Hidaka began to sweat and panic. This is, um... Yes, I had lent him. Lend him some money. What? That's what's going on, right? And you paid me back, didn't you? Uh oh uh, lunch break must be over. I better head back now. Hidaka rushed away from the seat. Kazuma, is it true that you've been borrowing some money? No, um, uh... Hey, if this is about the tattoo on your back and he's threatening you for it, please tell me. What? Why do you know about that? I explained what had happened on that rainy day to the now panicking Kazuma. Kazuma was hesitant at first, but probably decided that he couldn't hide it any longer. He began to talk about his past. I was actually raised by horrible parents, and the people who saved me out of that environment were the Yakuza. I got the tattoo out of admiration towards them. This is how Kazuma's story goes. He was born to parents whose lives were constituted by gambling. He was abandoned at home for days at a time since he was a little child. One day, a Yakuza member came over to retrieve some unpaid debts and found him almost dying of hunger. After being fed and raised in the house of the Yakuza, he began to admire them. I wanted to become like the people I admired and got the tattoo, but it was a big mistake. Turned out the Yakuza were only raising him so he could become an active member of criminal activities. They told me to do things like take money from elders and attack people from other Yakuza groups, and I got scared. So I ran away. After he ran away, he was saved by my uncle. When I was sitting by the road with nowhere to go, Mr. Masaki saved me. He introduced me to the police and public support, and I was finally able to escape the Yakuza. I see. I'm sorry I never told you about this. I thought I would be despised if I did. Mr. Masaki told me that I don't have to say anything about my past that I don't want to, and I blindly followed his words. I'm so sorry I did something like deceiving you. I was honestly surprised and had thoughts like, Uncle, you should have told me earlier. But for now, with him apologizing with tears in his eyes, there wasn't an inch of anger in me. Thank you for telling me. It's all right. Don't worry. Boss? I already know that you're passionate about your work, Kazuma. The tattoo won't bother me at all, so don't worry. Are you sure? Mr. Hidaka told me that I'd be fired if you found out about the tattoo. He said that? Jeez, if you'd get fired for that, there'd be a ton of employees who would be long gone. What? As long as they're out of the business, we hire lots of ex-delinquents and even convicts. They've already retired, but some people from the older generation had huge tattoos on their backs and even their chests. You don't have to worry at all about something like that. When I started laughing, the tension probably loosened up and Kazuma started crying. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. And apologizing. Now that that's over, the problem is... Threatening younger workers is an unforgivable action. You're not fit for our company. You're fired. Please don't. Forgive me. It was just an impulsive thought. I didn't mean any harm. No sane human being steals money without meaning any harm. After you pay Kazuma back, pack up your things and leave. If you don't pay back the money or refuse to leave, we're going to report you to the police. Hidaka kept complaining about this being an unfair dismissal, and we ended up asking our lawyer to take legal action. If only he'd calmly listened, his record wouldn't have been stained. Talk about what goes around comes around. Hidaka later came back to the factory, Furious that since the police got involved, 
no employer would hire him, but although he showed up with confidence, hey, come out! You still want to do this? When our scariest employee cracked his knuckles, he ran away screaming. I mean, that's the kind of guy you'd expect him to be, but after that day, he never showed his face again. Kazuma has been working hard as always. Hello? Uncle? Finally! Where on earth were you? Sorry, sorry. I was doing a lap around the world on a fancy cruise ship. Jeez. Oh, I heard about Kazuma. The tattoo. There's something like that you should have told me before bringing him. Huh? I told you, didn't I? And he might look intimidating, but he's a nice guy? You were talking about the tattoo when you said intimidating? Ugh, that's my uncle. <laughs> my bad, my bad. But he's a nice guy, huh? Yes. He works very hard for us. Thanks to Kazuma, the mood in the factory is great, and the numbers are going up. That's amazing! Do me a favor and treat him well. I'll come take a look at you guys once in a while. That's what he said, but Uncle ended up going on a second lap around the world. And the next time we saw his face was half a year later. Enough about my too bold uncle. We're working hard every day with a great relationship between each other. Kazuma says his goal is to save up his money to remove the tattoo. I ought to support him so he can reach his goal quicker. All right, Kazuma, let's go out for dinner. On me. Are you sure? Of course, you deserve it. Order anything you want. Come on, boss, that ain't fair. We want to go too. Of course, we'll all go together. All right, let's drink until we empty the boss's wallet. Go easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> Kazuma and everyone on the team, I'm counting on you all. Let's work together to make the most of this company. I'm Takayuki Nakano. I have the kanji for happiness in my name, but I can hardly remember being happy in my life because my parents were debt-written bums. Until the third grade, I was just barely able to live a normal life thanks to my grandmother who lived in the neighborhood. I never went hungry because my grandmother cooked for me and provided me with clothes so I didn't have to dress like a stench. But it was the worst after my grandmother passed away. My mother was a self-proclaimed professional pachinko player, and my father was a self-proclaimed professional horse racing forecaster. She would win on rare occasion and buy me sushi or a cake, but that would happen once a month or so. It was so common for both of them to be gone for days at a time that I was living on my own as a third grader. If that wasn't enough, they even collected a debt. I thought they had paid it off with my grandmother's inheritance, but it looks like they borrowed from somewhere else again. By the time I was in sixth grade, Yakuza started coming to our house to collect the money. Hey, where's your mom and dad? I'm sorry, they haven't come home since yesterday. I'll be back tomorrow, so keep them here when they get back, understood? But I can't do it. Dad's too strong, and he's violent. If your parents don't show up, you're gonna be in big trouble. Tell them to be here tomorrow. I yes. I shriveled up to the threat of a real Yakuza. That night, my parents finally came home reeking of alcohol. Sure enough, when I told them about the Yakuza, just ignore them or pretend like you're gone. And they wouldn't listen to me. But you have to pay back the money you borrowed. Shut up! If we pay them back, we won't be able to pay for your food. Tell that to the Yakuza then. I don't want to deal with that anymore. Don't you dare talk back. It was pointless telling anything to these parents. And the next day... What? Your parents aren't around today either. I'm sorry. Um, here's some money. Change? What is this? It's not even enough to pay for interest. This is what I could find scavenging under the vending machine. I'm not accepting that. Go buy some bread with that. You haven't eaten, have you? I'll be back in the morning. Keep the door unlocked and don't let your parents find out. You got it? The Yakuza left without taking anything. I bought a loaf of bread at a convenience store and ate it. First meal in a long time was so delicious that it brought tears to my eyes. I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to be by my grandma's side. At such a low point in my life, something happened which changed my destiny. Shut up! Give me the money! The next morning, when I left the door unlocked as I was told, a few Yakuza came barging in. My parents jumped up, rattled and shaking. 
Hurry up and give me all the money you got! I'm so sorry! We aren't ready yet this month! Next month, we promise. We promise we'll pay you back. Stop screwing around! If you can't pay up, I might have to make you work in the North Sea! Please don't do that! That's right! I'll give him to you for the day! Yes, please, take him away! He's almost in middle school, so have him work or something! What are you talking about? Why should I? I was pushed towards the Yakuza. Taking advantage of the opportunity, my parents escaped through the window. You gotta be kidding me. What the hell? Damn it! You didn't even raise your kid properly, and now you're selling your own kid to the Yakuza? I couldn't stop crying in frustration. I don't know if they felt sorry for me, if they were fed up. <laughs> Let's go! The Yakuza left without saying anything and went to the back of the house so maybe they chased after my parents. I didn't care about anything anymore. I stopped going to school and stayed home. Two days later... What? You're alone again? Where are your parents? They haven't been home since then. Don't tell me you haven't eaten since then. Please leave me alone. I don't care anymore. Damn it. If you die like this, it'll be like it's my fault. All right, come on. What? I said, come on! What? You still want to live here? I was so hungry, I couldn't think straight. In a daze, I left the house with the Yakuza pulling me by the arm. The Yakuza, whose name was Kawase, lived in a shabby apartment. I thought he was going to sell me off somewhere. I was speechless when he laid out cup noodles and pastries in front of me. Eat. Don't worry. There's no poison in it. Why? I don't know. It's just a whim. If you don't eat it, I'll eat it. As I started gobbling up the food, Kawase-san said, That's right, and laughed a little. After a few days of being taken care of at Kawase-san's house, I was handed a document and told to fill it in. Apparently, I was going to be placed at a shelter. An old friend of mine works at the government office. I went over and talked to him. Write your name there. He'll take care of the rest. Th thank you very much. Huh. Your name is Takayuki? Yes, but I'm not living a happy life at all. <laughs> I'm Kota, two written with the kanji big and happiness. But I'm not happy at all, so I guess we're similar. His face looked somewhat lonely as he said that while puffing his cigarette. Then I was on track to go into a shelter and live a life completely detached from my toxic parents. Apparently, my parents still haven't returned home and have completely disappeared. Thank you for all that you've done for me. I will definitely return the favor when I grow up. Don't feel indebted to the Yakuza. Well, live strong. Yes, thank you very much. After that, I went to junior high school and graduated. I was to attend high school in good spirits. There were some small bumps in the road at the facility and times when I felt uncomfortable. And it was a hundred times better than being in that house. I studied hard so I could get into a good company, and I was able to get a job after graduating from high school. The apartment I rented was small, but it was my own space. No toxic parents and no Yakuza barging in to collect money. This is how I was finally able to feel happiness. About a year later, Kawase-san, it has been a long time. I came to thank you for that time. That day, I came to visit Kawase-san's house the Yakuza who rescued me from my toxic parents. Kwase-san had moved away, and it took me a year to find his place. Kwase-san came out looking half asleep. I'm Takayuki, who seems happy only in name even though he's not happy. When I said that, Huh? Oh! It's you from back then! He noticed and let me in. I see, you're doing all right. That's good. Yes, it was thanks to Kwase-san's help that day. Thank you so much. I told you not to thank the Yakuza. Well, I'm glad you didn't end up like me. Kawase-san, do you regret becoming a Yakuza? Kawase-san snickered and said, It wasn't so bad in the old days, but as I get older, I see people my age living in the sun and living on the right path. I have to wonder why I'm still here as the days go by. Then, uh, um, why don't you leave the Yakuza? Huh? You say that so easily, but... I saw it on TV. That Yakuza can leave. The government is doing things to support them. 
I want to repay you, Kawase-san. And if you want to leave the Yakuza, I'll give you support. Yes, I was looking for Kawase-san because I wanted to repay him in any way I could. Kawase-san with a fed-up expression. It ain't that simple. And laughed. In the end, I was sent home that day. But a few days later, I received an email from an unknown address to my email address on the business card I had given him. It was from Kawase-san. There it said, I'm seriously thinking of leaving the Yakuza. Tell me about that support you were talking about. I visited Kawase-san's house again. When I saw you, I thought maybe it's still possible for me to start over. Sorry for turning you away before. No, I'm glad you're relying on me. I told Kawase-san about the support I had been researching. I see. So they introduced you to jobs and stuff after you quit. Yes, and they also seem to be able to help you with living expenses. I see. It says minimum expenses. So I guess it's not going to be big money. Big money? Apparently they stopped cutting off fingers, but asked for money instead. I was hoping to borrow a large sum of money for support, but I guess that's not going to happen. If you need money, I have some saved up. I've been saving up to repay you. Please use it. Don't be stupid. I can't take that kind of money. But I want you to be happy. I'm happy now, and I want you to be happy too. Just like the kanji in your name. When I stubbornly persisted, Kawase-san finally broke and said, All right, I'll borrow it. I promise I'll pay you back. I'll borrow it until then. Is that okay with you? Yes. No interest and no deadlines. I'll lend it to you as long as you need it for. So please, quit the Yakuza and find happiness. Yeah, thanks. Fortunately, Kawase-san was still an underling. And because I gave him the money he asked, he was able to quit the Yakuza without incident. Thanks to you, I was able to get back on my feet. I even found a job. I thought it would never be possible, but I learned that you can do it if you try. Seriously, thank you. Oh no, please don't thank me. I'm glad I could return the favor, even just a little bit. After that, Kawase-san came to return the money every month and we became drinking buddies. We found joy and happiness in our peaceful, normal days. But about a year after Kawase-san quit the Yakuza, someone appeared to break that peace. Takayuki, you've grown up! Dad? I saw you in front of the station. I was so surprised to see you in a suit. Don't tell me you were following me. Those two scum parents came to my apartment all of a sudden. Let me some money. I'll win tomorrow for sure. I'll pay you back double. So do me a favor. 500,000 should be good for now. I raised you and want you to return the favor. The favor? I don't owe you a single favor. What? You can't talk to your parents like this. As the scum raised their voices from the room. Hey, what's the trouble? Kawase-san came out. I had invited him for a drink at home that day. Look who it is, Takayuki's parents. You finally came home, huh? Whoa! You're from the Yakuza! You live with the Yakuza? What? No way! No way? I see. If you're gonna have a misunderstanding, I'm gonna play along with it. Yeah, thanks to everything when I was a kid, I became a Yakuza to get revenge on you. Brother, these guys don't have any money anyway. Let's take them apart and sell their guts. Kawase-san seems to have caught my intention. He grins and starts cracking his knuckles. Yeah, scums who don't pay should be fed to the fishes. Dead! My parents screamed and ran away. They never came back to see me after that. A few months later, I heard from an old buddy of mine that your parents are on a fishing boat up north for real. Well, they probably won't be back for a while. I don't even want to see their bones, so I'm hoping they'll just scatter into the sea. <laughs> Look at that mouth of yours! Classic san Want to have a takoyaki party at my place sometimes? I bought a takoyaki plate with my bonus money. Takoyaki party? Are you a student? That sounds nice. Let's do it. Okay. I'll be waiting. Yeah. I'll buy us some nice bottle of sake. Just because you were born to toxic parents doesn't mean you'll always be unhappy. Depending on yourself and the people you meet, your life can change. Wase-san and I still have a long way to go. 
I'm gonna do whatever it takes to find happiness, as my name suggests. I'm Kazuya Shindo. I can't gain weight no matter how much I eat, and my parents and siblings are all thin. At school, my classmates called me the Bean Sprout family and say things like, Is your family poor? How is it possible to be malnourished in this day and age? And they sometimes made fun of me. But fortunately, I had a lot of good friends, and I was able to go to school normally until junior high school. However, as soon as I entered high school, I was noticed by a bad senior who was a delinquent. His name was Tatsuma Horiuchi. It all started when we bumped into each other at the entrance ceremony. He must have thought it was funny how I got knocked down and started teasing me every day, calling me a skinny bean sprout. Hey, skinny Shindo! Go to the store and buy some 10 breads! Why me? Are you challenging Horiuchi? Horiuchi's so famous for being bad that even gangs are trying to talk to him. Go buy it now! You wanna get beat up? He grabbed me by the chest and lifted me up. But that time, the homeroom teacher came by and saved the day. After that, Horiuchi would often try to make me do his dirty work or tease me by saying, try doing an impersonation of that comedian, which was the worst. Sometimes a classmate from junior high school would come to my rescue, but... If you defend Shindo, I'll beat you up instead. He would threaten them. I didn't want to get my friends in trouble. You shouldn't get involved with me at school. So I told them to stay away from me. When we got home, my friends and I played games, talked on video calls, and had some peaceful times. So I was still able to go to school. I was really fed up with Horiuchi and his friends. Then one day, Horiuchi come to Manwa Station at night. He called me over. No way! Why do I have to go there? Don't you talk back to me! Unless you want to get hurt even worse, you better come. If you don't show up, I'll beat you up tomorrow. No! I'll beat up Suzuki and the others too! Wait! Suzuki has nothing to do with this! Shut up! You're all in it together! If you don't like it, come over here! You hear me? I reluctantly went to the station where he told me to go. I really didn't want to go out at night. I lied to my parents and said, My friend invited me to a local festival and left the door. But I regretted going. After all, Horiuchi was waiting for me with his bad friends, grinning. Oh, here you are. I was bored. So I thought I'd show you an easy way to make some money. It's fine. Shut up and do as you're told. All right. Go take money from that old man. What? It's a hunt for old people. Test your metal, man. Go ahead. Uh, what? But that's a crime! He threatened me. But I couldn't let this happen. I resisted desperately. Horiuchi and the others clicked their tongues at me and said, You scaredy cat? Then I'll show you an example. It's your turn next time. And went towards the skinny old man. Oh no, should I call the cops? But what happened next was an unexpected turn of events. Hey old man, lend me some money. What are you, students? The old man's cheeks were red as if he was drunk. His legs were wobbly too. If Horiuchi hit him, he'd be knocked out in a single blow. Horiuchi and the others approached the old man with grins on their faces. <laughs> Hurry up and give me your money, or do you want to get hurt? Hey, give me your wallet. I said, give me all your money! Huh? You want to borrow money? Just hurry up and get it out! If you insist that much, I'll lend you the money. But do you know the phrase, 10 for 10? Huh? 10 for 10? Shut up with your nonsense! Hurry up and get the money out! Then the old man suddenly changed his expression as if he turned into a different person. A sharp look. Horiuchi and the others drank their breath and backed away as if they too had noticed. Even I could tell. Those aren't the eyes of a man with principle. 10 for 10 means 10% 10 interest every 10 days. If you can pay up, I'll lend you the money. How much do you need? Come on, tell me, kid. You! Don't get smart with me! Who's the one getting smart? You've got to watch who you're talking to. Hey, everyone! Hey! The old man called out to the bar, and then came out... The Yakuza! Horiuchi and the others began to tremble as the tough-looking men appeared one after another. 
The man quickly rolled up his shirt sleeves. It was a tattoo, like the ones you see in Yakuza movies! They... they're real! You wanted to go pro, huh? Study carefully, alright? No! Uh, uh, alright! That guy! That guy said let's do it! Yeah! He told us to do it, so we had no choice! What? Me? I couldn't believe it! Horiyuchi and the others came running this way and pushed the blame towards me! While everyone was distracted, Horiyuchi and the others fled. No, I was just called out by those guys and- I I'm sorry! Please forgive me! My legs were trembling. I apologized countlessly to the scary looking men who were glaring at me! After looking at me for a while, as I shuddered and shook, the old man's- I understand. And said, You just got caught up with them, didn't you? I can't imagine you hanging around those guys. That's correct. I was called out, and I had no choice. I didn't expect you to take the fall for it. Don't get involved with those guys again. Thank you very much. But at school, I'm sure they'll try to- Hmm? Uh, no, it's- it's nothing. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry! But for a moment, I thought about tomorrow. If I go to school tomorrow, Horiyuchi and the others will tease me again. It's just another day of doom and gloom. I guess that thought must have shown on my face. The old man, what's the matter with you? You can't even stand up to those guys? Said in disappointment. Uh, I'm a skinny guy, as you can see. And I'm no match for them in strength. It's alright. I'm sorry. I won't come here anymore. Wait up! Don't you want to win against them? Well, I'd like to if I could, but it's impossible. You never know until you try. I thought it was impossible, but I was able to quit the Yakuza. Wait, um, aren't you a Yakuza? I laughed. I long to be a respectable man. I'll show you a good place if you're up for it. A good place? The old man introduced himself as Kasai and called out to a young man in the back who looked very well built. Give him a card, he said. Why, gym? Isn't a gym a place where you exercise? Yeah, it is. I'm the owner of that gym. These guys are my employees. Wait, they're not Yakuza disciples? <laughs> it may look that way, but don't worry. They're all men with principles. Come if you're up for it. We'll train you. But I don't have the money to go to a gym. This must be some kind of fate. You can come in for free. But if I judge you to be uncommitted, we'll have you quit right away. Well, it's your choice if you want to come or not. See you later. Smiling as he walked away, Kasai-san looked like a gentle saint, unlike earlier. What should I do? A gym with Yakuza ties must be a dangerous place. Oh, but they're not Yakuza. I was torn, but I decided to go to the gym. Horiyuchi and the others would tease me again from tomorrow. Thinking about that made me want to show them back. Kasai-san's gym was so bright, lively, and full of energy that it was hard to believe that it was run by a former Yakuza. My trainer, Mikami-san, was a former motorcycle gang member, and he started working here because he was moved by Kasai-san's caring nature. Muscles won't betray you! Now let's get to training! Yes! I'm looking forward to working with you! He taught me self-defense and a few fighting techniques, as well as physical training. He's an ex-Yakuza and ex-biker gang member, after all. The practical techniques were easy to understand, and he taught me a lot of fighting moves, so I got more and more into it. While at school, Horiyuchi and the others were still picking on me, but I'm training. Someday, I'm going to get back at you all! Thinking that kept me motivated. And six months later, finally, I had the perfect opportunity to get back at Horiyuchi and the others. That day, we stayed in the classroom to prepare for the school festival. We made the signboard, and all we had to do was wait for the paint to dry. Horiyuchi and the others who had been skipping school came back to the classroom. Smells like paint. How annoying are these people getting so worked up over a school festival? Hey, get out! You're in my way! <coughs> Stop! They just finished making it! Huh? What, you think you can talk back to me with your skinny arms? This stuff too! Yeah! This one too! Horiyuchi and the others began to destroy what the classmates had made. That's enough! I won't forgive you if you do any more! Who do you think you're talking to? Stop me if you can! 
You're getting on my nerves. If you don't come, I'll come to you! Shindo, watch out! You made the first move. To be honest, I was scared and my body was shaking. But thanks to my training, my body moved on its own. I fought back with practical techniques that Mikami-san and Kasai-san had taught me. I dodged a punch and kicked him in the back, and Horiuchi let out an ugly scream and fell to the floor. I got on his back and twisted his arm up, and he began to squeal. Ouch! Stop it! Stop it! Apologize to everyone! And apologize to me! I'll never be used by you again! Alright! Alright! I apologize! I'll apologize! Ow! Give me a break! This guy, he's been working out all of a sudden! You've heard of Y Gym next to the station, haven't you? Mikami-san there is my mentor. Mikami-san is that legendary kamikaze captain! At Jim, there's rumors of them being associated with the Yakuza! Y you're kidding me! It seems like they were conveniently misinterpreting me, so I'm just going to throw a wrench in the works here. Yeah, the owner, Kasai-san, is a member of the Manwa clan, and he's been very good to me. Remember a while back when you took me along and almost got into a fight with the Yakuza? That's him. When I said that, they started whispering, Oh no, and immediately ran away. Horiuchi was left alone. Wait! And shamelessly chased after them. After that, Horiuchi had exposed his disgraceful behavior in front of everyone, and he became as quiet as a borrowed cat. Thanks to that, I was able to talk normally with my friends at school. Horiuchi's cronies witnessing him getting beaten up on top of the bluff I made earlier seemed to work, as they recognized me as a dangerous guy, and all the delinquents stopped coming near me. Kasai-san! Mikami-san! I did it! Thanks to you, too! Thank you so much! Ah, oh, that's great! Even the look on your face changed, too. You're starting to look like a man. You'll keep training here, right? We'll be waiting. Yes, I still want to continue training, so please, keep me under your wing. Oh yeah, speaking of Horiuchi, he didn't seem to learn his lesson and started teasing the skinny guy in his class the next year. But it seems the parents of the guy he messed with were lawyers or something and filed a police report. Horiuchi transferred to a different school at the end of that year and was gone. Rumor has it they put him in a rehabilitation facility. I hope he gets straightened out a bit, though it seems difficult with that kind of personality. I'm still going to Kasai's gym and working out hard. I'm working hard to become a strong man both mentally and physically. Kasai-san, Mikami-san, please continue to look after- My name is Yusuke Shimada. I'm just a lonesome security guard working at a construction site. Even though this is how I am now, I used to do track and field in high school and had high hopes for the future. I was always a top player in all kinds of competition, and there were even talks about me getting drafted from colleges through track. But at junior year, I got injured. I received surgery and desperately rehabilitated and trained, but was never able to run the same way again. Don't give up! It would be such a waste for you to quit, Shimada! Thanks, Oki, but I don't think it'll work out anymore. Whenever I see everyone running, I feel jealousy or frustration and it starts to devour me. Shimada! If I decide to stay, I think I'll just become a burden to the whole club. I'm quitting, but thank you for everything. I ended up quitting the track team. Most of my teammates were disappointed of me having to leave, but there were some who were like this. Hey, Shimada! You're really quitting the club, huh? Yeah, that's right. I heard your injury didn't heal well, huh? You know, things like that happen because your daily behavior is out of line. Joke's on you! Hey, Kataoka! How could you say something like that? Oki, it's fine. Thanks. See you, Kataoka. I wish you good luck. After that, since I couldn't avoid meeting my ex-teammates everywhere I went, I decided to go to a university in the prefecture next door. After graduation, I began working as a sports instructor. I couldn't run at top speed like before, but after teaching kids gymnastics and helping elders recognize the joy in working out, I gradually began to feel better and was able to think, I'm glad I decided to play sports in the first place. After entering my 30s, I was finally able to shake off my past. But one day, after I turned 40, something unexpected happened. The gym was closing. It's true that the population around here had been declining, and less children were being born. 
This is too sudden. What should I do from now on? The only knowledge I have is about sports. That combined with an economic recession resulted in a difficulty finding a new job. I ended up getting declined by several companies, being left with a part-time job as a security officer in a construction site. The phrase, daily wage paid in cash, attracted me to this job, and I ended up getting accepted. Since my savings were almost completely out, I was truly grateful, no matter the job. Luckily for the new job, I was allowed to work for as much as I wished, though I didn't have to worry about staying afloat. The summers were brutally hot, and the winters almost froze me to death. But I worked hard every day to stay alive. Gosh, it's so hot. Can't stay working this job for too long. I need to hurry up and find a place that will hire me as a full-time employee. That day, I was sitting on a bench at the park during my break. Then, I couldn't help but run over to the little girl who was curled up under the high bar. Are you all right? Did you fall? Did you get hurt? Like the days back when I was instructor, I had rushed over to her by the time I noticed. Thankfully, the girl stood up and said, I'm all right, thank you. I was just practicing a trick and accidentally slipped. I see. Don't go too hard on yourself. But I'm the only one in my class who can't do it. So I want to learn how to no matter what. The girl, who introduced herself as Amy, kept practicing several times after I sat back on the bench. She was practicing very seriously, but she won't be able to pull it off if she keeps doing it like that. Um, try gripping the bar with your wrist facing down rather than up. It'll be easier for your gripping strength. I couldn't help myself and ended up giving her some advice. But everyone in my class is doing it the other way. It's all right. You could do it this way. Look, in hopes of cheering her up, I did the trick on a larger high bar. Wow, mister, are you good with high bars? Yeah, I'm actually pretty good at sports. I used to be an instructor. Wow, really? Please teach me too. I don't want to be made fun of at school anymore. I was hesitant at first, but gave in to her passion after being asked many times, then decided to teach her some tricks. At first, I only taught her during my breaks. But in time, she told me she wanted me to teach her on days off from school. So I started going to the park on weekends as well. Amy is an open-minded, quick learning, and most of all, hard-working little girl. After two weeks of learning, she was able to do a trick without any support. That's amazing! Amy, it's perfect! There's nothing more for me to teach. Thank you so much! But, um, I want to learn more new tricks. So, can you please come again next week, too? Sure, I'm always open. I'll see you next week, then. All right! Pure hard work and smile of a child is great as motivation. Seeing Amy helped me work harder. I have to move on from this unstable part-time job and become a full-time worker. One day, while I was working hard to find a new job, Are you the security guard that keeps talking to my daughter? While waiting at the park on the promised day, all of a sudden, a handsome man spoke to me. For some reason, he looks a lot like Amy. Could it be her father? Y yes um, I'm sorry. Even though she asked me to, I was beating her multiple times and... Are they gonna call the cops on me? My face turned blue as I apologized, but... I'm Amy's father, Kazuki Oikawa. Thank you for helping Amy so much. I'm glad I could finally meet you. Huh? Isn't he mad? While I was standing in awe, Amy came over with a bottle of juice in her hand. Dad, I bought the juice. Here's the change. Oh, hey, mister. This one is my dad. Now, now, Amy. Don't call me a this one. It turns out that Amy's father came with her just so he could thank me. Even after that, he kept thanking me and bowing his head. Hey, Dad, we're gonna practice running today. It's almost a sports festival at school. Please don't get in our way. Sorry, sorry. Dad'll be watching from here. May I ask you to please teach her? Of course! Mr. Oikawa seems to be utterly in love with Amy and was taking tons of pictures during practice. The pictures from this event were the ones that ended up changing my life. Mr. Oikawa asked me if he could post them on SNS with only his closest friends. And of course, I said yes. Only my side profile was in the picture, so I thought no one would recognize me, but... Bankai no see! I found you on Mr. Oikawa's social media! I'm glad you seem to be doing well! Yeah, but it was a coincidence. I wasn't teaching her for money. 
I could never forget your running form. And the scar on your knee from the surgery was in the picture too. Unbelievably, my teammate from the track club back in high school, Oki, found the picture. A job of security? I thought you were an instructor. Uh, the gym I worked at closed. It's embarrassing, but I'm just a part-time worker right now, right in the middle of job hunting. After I spoke in a self-ridiculing way, Oki was quiet for a while and started saying something very unexpected. I started a business. Mr. Oikawa and I met through business negotiations as well, and... Hey, Shimada, would you like to come work at my company? What? At your company? But I might not be competent. I thought about it for a bit, but maybe this could be some type of destiny. My parents are worrying about me as well. So I decided to go back to my hometown and work at Oki's company. So that's why I've decided to go back to my hometown. I see. It's going to get lonely around here. What? So you can't teach me athletics anymore? No. But I live in the prefecture next door, so I'll come back every once in a while. Please reach out to us whenever you come back. Amy will be eager to see you too. Of course, thank you. Alrighty then. I'll have high hopes for the day we meet again. And that's how I went back to my hometown. Oki's company sells and invents sports equipment, and I was able to utilize my knowledge as well as work with joy. Thinking back to it, meeting Amy allowed me to reunite with Oki, and I couldn't thank her enough. For Oki and Amy, I need to work hard until I can be proud. While working with those thoughts in mind, is that Shimada I see? I didn't know you were alive. Kataoka, I didn't see you for a while, so I thought you were already dead. Good for you. I'm actually living the best life. <laughs> what do you mean best life? It's a pity you can't even run. What an embarrassment. I almost lost it after seeing Kataoka's grin. But then, what do you mean? Shimada is helping my business with product invention. He's a precious employee that our company couldn't run without. Oki, on top of that, he even teaches sports to the children of famous entrepreneurs. His name is known around the personal trainer business Huh? How? This guy's famous? There's no way! Regardless of being famous or not, he's teaching all kinds of children. Oh, this. It's a picture from the house I went to last week. No way! When I showed him a picture of me and a celebrity, Kataoka nearly dropped his jaw. That's right. Even after I returned to my hometown, I continued traveling to the prefecture next door to teach gymnastics to children. It all started when Amy reached out to me saying, teach me how to do some mat exercises that I can't do well. Ah, after half a year since I moved back. While I was teaching gymnastics to Amy at Mr. Okaiwa's house since he invited me, some friends of his that were coincidentally there asked me to teach their kids as well. Thanks to Oki telling me that working on the side is all right if it's for the children, do it as much as you wish. My income is now three times the amount back to when I was a security officer. I'm content with my life right now. I don't care whether you look down on me. Do as you wish. See ya. Right as I was about to get up and leave, Kataoka said, wait, wait, begging me not to leave. Please introduce me to them. Huh? Who? The celebrities' kids. I have some accomplishments in sports too. Mr. Oikawa is asking me to teach his daughter for my personality. Teaching is easy. Just introduce me to one or two. If possible, about 10. No way. You went to university on a sports scholarship and entered this company as an athlete, right? You aren't struggling to live. After that, I heard through someone else that Kataoka couldn't find a full-time job and was now barely staying employed through part-time jobs. Apparently, he got drunk at a bar and got the cops called on him for being violent. Eh, not that it matters to me. I've been working hard at my job while staying connected with Mr. Oikawa, living my best life. In my private life, things have been going pretty well with a lady that Mr. Aikawa introduced me to. Apparently, good connections end up bringing more good connections. For Mr. Oikawa and Noki, who provided me with a chance at life, I'm planning to keep on earnestly working on hard.